So this project is a culmination. You can see that three different labs are involved. So this is a nice example of interdisciplinary collaborations that has brought this uh, project to a very successful end. Not the end, the successful process has been uh, going on. So the, or this project all started with a protein that was being worked out in a plant system. So the plant system, the rap on protein is known for a long time, mm-hmm. along with animal rap on proteins. So um, as a graduate student, I was also interested in the rap on protein. And then when we knock out the gene from the plants, the plants became drought resistant. And so it was very uh, tantalizing um, uh, results, of course. So we wanted to pursue that further into the making some inhibitor compounds so that we can make those compounds as anti-drought compounds for plants. So that's when Dr. Shiva came into the place. He has been... Um, take on that, so I approached him so whether we can get some inhibitor compound for RAP1 protein so that we can use those compounds as an anti-drought compound for plants. And along the way, I approached him and then we can take him from here. Yeah, he came to me 10 years, approximately 10 years back, and then he stopped on my lab. And then I was asking, and then he was introducing himself and asking for structure-based drug design, I said, on that. Immediately I said, oh, yeah, let's, why not, let's collaborate. And then we started immediately after, I think, one month, we started a collaboration. And then based on the proprietary compounds we have in the database, small molecules, and uh, I screened, I think, more than 5 million compounds. And uh, we identified a number of potential binder based on the simulation, docking simulations. Then I told him why, and then 50 are the potential are predicted to be bind to the rack one a and then he tested initially 15 compounds, and then further we went on testing further 30 compounds. And then he identified around the 15 compounds is potential to be low micromolar activity against rack one And then further, we started as a drug-resistant, drought-resistant drug, and then HEMOID further tested in several different uh, cell lines, starting viruses and other cancer cell lines, and HEMOID will do further. So while we are pursuing the drugs in the plants, at that time, some very nice papers came out from many other labs where they showed that, that many viruses uses IRES-based translation for those purposes, they use the host protein rack one. So immediately, I then started the collaboration with Dr. Tang because he's the, the chief virologist in the Howard University. And then I approached him how we can take this information, take these compounds, and then work with the, some of the viruses that he has. And then started the collaboration with his lab because without his lab, <laughs> because I don't have any access to being a plant virus. I don't have access to any of the viruses in, in my place. So I approached him also, then we started all the way all together. Yeah, okay. So my uh, name is Chi Tan. My lab is working on the viro- viruses, virology lab. So virus in my lab include in a virus like herpes virus, and including herpes simplex 1, cytomegalovirus, virus, coma virus, and also RNA virus like Zika virus, dengue virus, and some DVD and virus. So when Dr. Ona, he showed me the uh, drug and uh, for the HCV fruits and also HIV with uh, Dr. Lekhai also in our uh, Harvard University. So I was also interested in trying these two other uh, viruses like uh, herpes virus. So, uh, which is in the paper. The effect for the herpes virus, we don't know yet, but uh, we are still de- trying to dig out what is the mechanisms of that drug against the, the viral replication. So yeah, in this paper, you, you can see that we just show that the, the drugs are effective in inhibiting the replication of the viruses, but we have not shown that whether it is still inhibiting the any bona fide IRESs in HCB. So that's why our next projects are all going on at the same time, like testing those uh, drugs inside the mouse. And so the mouse work will be coming along. So there are many different viruses that the time already has done all the paperwork for the IACU protocol so that once it's approved, we are going to test those drugs on the uh, efficacy of those drugs on other viruses as well. And at the same time, looking for this, uh, many of the IRES-based, translation-based viruses that are known in the literature, especially the recent paper that came out on the dengue and the Zika viruses that have been shown to use uh, IRESs for the translation as well. So we have also obtained those constructs so that we will be able to look into those kind of viruses with these drugs as well. So, 
basically we are very happy on this project because we started as a drought uh, resistant drug and then we in ended crops. up now we are in crops. So we have many applications based on this drug. So starting from drug resistant for crops and then viruses and then now cancer. So single drug is effective in multiple uh, species that we are very happy and is also working as well. Now we are pursuing the animal model with the doctor laboratory. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That uh, if we there's a, a lot of uh, anti-virus drugs, for example, anti-herpes virus drugs like uh, uh, cyclochrome and cancerclone. But those drugs are very um, specific to only part, only kind of uh, herpes virus. So if this drug is good, I think it should be can be used for many different viruses. So it's very very important to develop the wide range anti-viral drugs. So one of the problems with the antiviral drugs is that the virus mutate very quickly to become resistant to the drugs which are targeting them, them very directly. Because this drug that we have developed is a target, do not target the virus directly because they are just targeting a host protein. So in that way, this virus, this drug will be able to withstand any of the mutational effect that my virus try to do to evade these drugs because it is, these drugs are not targeting directly to the viruses. And if you look into the literature in the RAP1 mediated physiological processes, you will see that being a scaffold protein, and we have shown that before that they interact with almost 110 different proteins. So they can they can regulate many different physiological processes and effectively these drugs, individual molecules should be available to regulate those physiological processes that RAP1 regulates in diverse organisms from the single cell like yeast from the human. Almost everybody has the same conserved sequences for this RAP1. Then uh, regarding the next steps for the drug development side, so we already established the toxicity profile of this drug two years ago and then it has a very good uh, toxicity profile. Uh, Tang uh, tested this animal efficacy then we have a plan uh, to go with the further advanced preclinical for the PKPD studies and uh, go with the FDA for the NDA, yeah, IND application. That's what we are talking now, our plan for the next uh, steps. Yeah, we just applied for the ICUG in the Harvard University, which is a long process. process. But, uh, it, it can be um, approved very soon. So once the ICUG is approved, we are going to start the animal studies on very different virus. We have now in ICO protocol, we propose to uh, try the drug on COVID virus with DNA virus and also the uh, enteral virus EVD68 and which is um, single strand RNA virus and without development and also fluid virus like Zika virus and uh, dengue virus which are the fluid virus with uh, single strand RNA but with the email. So we try to see the if the drug has effect in the animal level on many many different types of types of the uh, viruses. So the purpose, the, the aim, the goal is to develop a wide Anti-viral drug. So one drug can use for many different viruses. So now, because we didn't publish about the mechanism these drugs are working, but we propose that these drugs are inhibiting the IRES activities of the virus um, uh, viruses, which are using not the uh, cap-dependent translation, but they are doing the IRES-based translation. So we have already finished a project with our student, and now almost in the publication stage with Dr. Nekai left, who is next door to us. He is an HIV um, specialist and then it has been published that HIV uses also IRES based translation in under certain physiological conditions. So we are using dual luciferase constructs and then have shown recently have shown and obtained very good data that we have the drugs are inhibiting directly only the IRES based translation, not the captivating translation. For that publication so it be the key to show the mechanistic way these drugs are working in the cell. So once we establish all the mechanistic and then the efficacy and we also have a plan to collaborate with the national laboratory because it is a highly demand because this single drug has a broad antiviral category so there may be a demand so we have to go with the advanced studies by collaborating with the national laboratory because they are very uh, interested in the in these viruses uh, that's another plan for us to take this uh, next step yeah well the other thing i want to say is the uh, i thought Ona mentioned before already which is the conversion for all three of us is really really uh, special because we are in from different background different land and with different expertise 
compliments. Really this this is really, really uh, nice. We are, yeah, basically we are lucky and we are happy. <laughs> this is the best thing that also that uh, the location wise is very nice because we are all close by and then with different expertise we are available. So this is a nice um, success story for interdisciplinary yeah. collaborative research that can see people with a completely different background. Virologists, <laughs> uh, chemist, uh, computational chemist and the black <laughs> biologist. <laughs> and so that you can think like three different completely disjointed subjects and matters can come together into a successful completion of a, of a project. Yeah, uh, the one thing the bottleneck right now is getting this funded because for the FPS studies in advance, studies for the PKP, for the modification of this drug uh, to get the more efficacy in the animal studies. Uh, we are waiting uh, because this drug is in hand. Once we get that, uh, we decide how to modify this drug. And for that, we are uh, yeah, looking uh, yeah, for the uh, object.